Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is gonna be on TMAO and heart disease. TMO stands for trimethylene and oxide. It's a metabolite from carnitine and choline. We're gonna talk about it, we're gonna break it down, talk about some, what some of the research on it is and give you a broad perspective on how to take it in and apply some functional medicine principles in and around it. So first off, what is TMAO? So I'm gonna put up a picture on screen so you guys can see a little bit better. TMO is consumed from animal products, so dairy, eggs, it's very high in fish actually, which we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, steaks, animal products, and these compounds then go into your body, they go into your intestines, the choline hits your intestines, and the gut microflora metabolizes it and creates trimethylamine, and then that goes through the liver, and that creates tri trimethylamine and oxide, and that's kind of what's atherosclerotic. It can create inflammation in the arteries. At least there's some correlation with it. The question is, we gotta put it in context of the big picture. So I just wanna lay that out from you mechanistically. Now, what's important and what's not? So the first thing is, new foods or old foods don't cause new disease. That's the first thing. So when we look at everything and we try to get a per perception of the timing of it, and, and how, how do we get to where we're at? We have to look at foods that we consumed at higher levels many years ago, let's say 100 years ago, and then we have to look at the incidence of these foods being consumed today have actually dropped, right? Animal products, fats, uh, we know that because people have been fat phobic. We know the food pyramid, all this information has scared people in and around fat, fat consumption. And when we look at the data on consumption, we actually see some of these things have dropped and we see sugar consumption, carbohydrate consumption has actually gone up especially refined sugar, five pounds per person in 1900, over 130 pounds today. So we know there's a, a big drop in some of these foods, but more, it's a sharper increase in other foods such as sugar and trans fat. So old foods don't cause new disease. That's like the first thing I wanna look at. So then we have to say, well, how do we get here? So when we look at studies like this, the important thing we wanna highlight is causation over correlation. So a lot of these studies, they're correlating. They're trying to make a correlation between this metabolite, TMAO, trimethylene N-oxide, and heart disease. Now, they did one study on mice in 1999, and that's where they saw this increase in inflammation with this TMAO metabolite. Second study was done, I think, Journal of Nature, and they did it on one vegan and five um, meat eaters. So six people total, five meat, one vegan. Really important. So not a big study, not big at all. Now, one thing we want to highlight, and this is what we see in a lot of anti-meat studies, is healthy user bias. This is important. This is where we talk about confounding variables. So if we look at someone who's vegan or vegetarian, whether you think that's healthy or not, people that have you know relatively healthy habits, they tend to consume more water, avoid alcohol, avoid refined sugar, avoid trans fat, exercise more. So they may do something that you may not consider to be healthy, but they're doing a lot of, let's say, widely agreed upon health habits, right? Ones that I just mentioned. So when you have people like that, there's already some health factors that are supporting them. So you have to factor that in because the biggest issue with TMAO is when you look at people that eat meat, well, what's the quality of that meat? Is it organic? Is it pasture fed? Uh, did that animal consume antibiotics? Because we know TMAO is metabolized, or TM, the choline is metabolized by the gut bacteria. And if the gut bacteria is altered from grains, pesticide, glyphosate, antibiotics in the food, mycotoxins, we know that gut bacteria is altered, and we know the metabolites from that choline to TMA to TMAO after it's converted by the liver is gonna be altered. So if you have SIBO, food allergens, gut permeability, then your ability to convert choline to TMA to TMAO it may be higher or lower, right? There may be something off because the big thing that we cannot control in this study is gonna be the gut bacteria because everyone's gut milieu is different and we're not consuming TMAO, our body's converting it in our guts first and then our liver second. So the gut bacteria is a big, let's just say breeding ground for a lot of this to happen. And when you take someone like vegan or vegetarians with this healthy user bias active, they may have 
better gut bacteria because they're consuming maybe more sauerkraut or kimchi or kombucha. They're trying to consume more probiotics. They are eating more plant fibers and, and um, starches, and they're doing things like that that are supporting their gut bacteria. And they may have a gut bacteria that's slightly healthier than someone who's eating meat that's processed and all the sugar and the refined junky fats that are more trans fat based. So you have to look at it like that. Now, I would urge researchers to look at comparing paleo template people that are consuming healthier meats, healthier fats, while at the same time com consuming more plant fibers, more healthy starches, more healthy fats, avoiding refined sugar, avoiding the excess alcohol and the junky excess omega-6 fatty acids. And again, I come at it from a little bit of a different angle because I know there's research out there, meta-analyses that look at multiple studies and they look at the correlation between other studies and they look at meat consumption, saturated fat, egg consumption. They do not see any correlation between those foods being consumed and heart disease. So now you're saying this TMAO, which is in a lot of these same foods that had to have been consumed by other people in these studies, now is causing heart disease. Well, well, why? So because it doesn't make sense. Because if if it were true, if it were truly causative, we would see that correlation with those meta studies not be correct. We would see it say the opposite that there is a increased risk of heart disease. And again, a lot of this is from that the heart, um, the heart disease or the um, the healthy heart kind of lipid hypothesis, which looks at fat consumption or cholesterol consumption as what clogs the arteries. And we know a lot of this started in the early 20th century, a lot of it through animal studies feeding guinea pigs cholesterol. These guinea pigs' arteries got clogged, but the thing is guinea pigs don't naturally consume cholesterol anyway. We have many hundreds of, many tens of thousands of years of consuming cholesterol and evolving with these healthy uh, animal products and helping to grow our brain. So we've evolved that. And so you have to look at kind of, is this a biologically appropriate diet for someone or not? Just like you try to make a cat a vegan, forget it. It's strictly a carnivore. We're more omnivores and there are some animals, cows for instance, that are strictly herbivores. So you got to look at, is this food biologically appropriate? Number one. Number two, what's the quality of that food? Does that food have good quality? Is there antibiotics, pesticides, or chemicals in there? that could be altering that person's gut. Uh, number three, healthy user biased. We have to already compare a healthy group of people that are vegan to a healthy group of people that are um, eating animal protein. We have to do both. So kind of a paleo template people would be a, a perfect plug-in to compare to a vegan vegetarian group. All right, this is really important. Um, also, do do these people that are coming into these group already have SIBO? Do they already have bacterial overgrowth? Do they already have gut issues to begin with? Because if the gut bacteria has such a big interplay with this, we want to know because that could skew TMAO. And also a lot of these studies are looking at TMAO excretion. So is there an upregulation in the body's ability to excrete TMAO? Right, is, it, is it an excretion issue or not? So we have to look at that. So healthy user bias, we gotta look at the food quality, look at the gut bacteria. We gotta compare a healthy group of vegan vegetarians to a healthy group of animal um, consumption people, paleo template people. That'd be my best bet. And you gotta look at it in a functional medicine concept or a functional medicine perspective. It, anything that drives inflammation increases your risk of all-cause mortality. So the more we can reduce inflammation in our foods, um, in our lifestyle, it's going to help us. So in general, a good foundational anti-inflammatory diet is helpful. And then functional medicine-wise, this is where we got to look deeper at supporting healthy gut bacteria, making sure infections and good digestion is present. And that's why you want to work with a good <clears throat> functional medicine doctor that can help you line those things up and kind of help put the puzzle pieces together. Because when you see articles in the New York Times like this, it's really easy to get lost and question kind of why you're doing what you're doing. Hope that helps. I'll open it up for questions here now. All right, any questions, y'all? What do you think? Hey, excellent. I think we answered everything. I think we're on the right track with everything here. Anyone want to chime in? Feel free and let me know. So in general, with heart disease, the biggest thing that a lot of these um, studies aren't factoring in with the, the diet heart hypothesis is that most of the cholesterol is actually consumed or actually made by your body. So the whole idea was, hey, I put this cholesterol in my body, it's gonna go in, it's gonna clog my heart. Not necessarily true because most of it's made by the liver. The hemomethylglutarate coa reductase enzyme is what makes your cholesterol, about 90%. 
And what's going to exacerbate that is going to be insulin. And so if we're consuming a lot of carbohydrates and, and, and we're driving up cortisol, which then drives up insulin, then we're going to then make more cholesterol. And that may, may be an abnormal amount. So the biggest thing you can do is get your insulin in check. And I've seen patients who are vegan vegetarians with sky high levels of insulin because they were consuming too much carbohydrates for what their body needs. I propose that most vegans and vegetarians who do well on a vegan vegetarian diet do well because they naturally can handle more carbohydrates. They have a higher carbohydrate tolerance and because because of that, they can handle higher amounts of insulin or their body can deal with that insulin better. If you're dealing with that insulin better, you're not going to have as much cholesterol being spit off as a byproduct. Does cholesterol get higher when sleeping? It's possible because you are doing a lot of repairing and regeneration, and cholesterol is a really important hormone building block for helping to repair your body because all your hormones emanate from cholesterol. So you may see cholesterol go up when you are sleeping for sure. Awesome, everyone. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoyed it, let me know your comments of cholesterol. Let me know your experience uh, with TMAO or taking various carnitine supplements. Also, smash that like button and give me a share. We'll be back very soon. You guys have a phenomenal day. Take care. Bye now.